Hello to all of the STS family today, STS being Search the Scriptures, of course. Uh, welcome to study three in the book of Titus, the last study in this book, uh, which happens to cover chapter number three in Titus. So if you have a Bible, you may want to get that out and look at that. If not, we'll have all the scriptures uh, up on the screen in just a moment. Once again, this book being written to the young Greek pastor by the name of Titus that Paul sent really as the... Uh, Apostle to, to Crete to help open up the church and found the church there and install pastors. And he writes him as he wrote Timothy about the same time, giving him just some, some advice from a mentor on uh, how to set up the church there on the island of Crete. We are at the last chapter, as I said, and we are going to look at the first uh, two questions from the first seven verses of this chapter and then the last question from the final eight verses. Let's look at the first two questions before we read those verses. How ought we as Christians to behave in relation to civil authorities and our fellow man? And what double awareness about ourselves should inspire such conduct? Then the second question from verses 4 through 7. What are we told here about the source and the method of our salvation? And secondly, our present state and our future hope. And do you realize, as you ought, how richly, according to verse number 6, that you are endowed? And then from those final eight verses in the chapter, by what actions and by what abstinence should genuine faith in God express itself, and what is necessary on our part to ensure that that happens? Let's look at Titus chapter number 3, verses 1 through 7. It will be on the screen from BibleGateway.com. Once again, Paul writing to Titus, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and to show true humility toward all men. At one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of the righteous things that we had done, but because of His mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by His grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. Let's look at the first two questions from those first seven verses. First of all, question one, how ought we as Christians to behave when it comes to civil authorities and our fellow man? And what double awareness about ourselves should inspire such conduct? Well, according to Paul here in Titus chapter 3, we are to obey civil authorities. We're to do everything that we can to live at peace with them and with all the people that are around us. And we need to be reminded or remind ourselves that for the grace of God, uh, many of us were far worse than the lost that live around us every day. Uh, we were in the exact same condition, the exact same kinds of sins, hating and hating one another, all sorts of problems, but it was through the grace of God uh, that we were redeemed from that. The second question, again, from those first seven verses, what are we told here about, first of all, the source and the method of our salvation and secondly about our present state and our future hope and do you realize just how richly according to verse 6 uh, that you are in doubt well once again were it not first of all for the very fact that God demonstrated his mercy to each of us by not treating us as our sins deserve uh, we would have been struck dead uh, a long time ago by the glory of God you know the reality is what's fair is no one going to heaven what's fair is no one being able to live forever uh, with Jesus Christ and in the presence of Almighty God. What's fair is that everyone go to hell. Uh, but God, through His grace and His mercy, stretches out His hand and He snatches many of us uh, from eternal punishment. He demonstrated instead of that justice, grace, by not giving us what we deserve. Instead, we can have one more day of life on this earth, one more day of the possibility of salvation of souls. And when we accept that free gift that we did not deserve, we did nothing to deserve it, the Bible says we're justified. We're made right. How can you possibly make so much sin 
right before such a holy God. Truly something to be amazed about. Let's look at the last question by reading Titus chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. Paul again writing to this young preacher on the island of Crete. This is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to stress these things so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to do what is good. These things are excellent and profitable for everyone, but avoid foolish controversies and genealogies and arguments and quarrels about the law, because these are unprofitable and they're useless. I want you to listen to these next two verses, very interesting verses. Warn a divisive person once then warn him a second time. After that, have nothing to do with him. You may be sure that such a man is warped and sinful, and he is self-condemned. Once again, Paul's writing to men or women here. Warn him once. After that, a second time, then have nothing to do with him. Boy, the Apostle Paul sure would struggle in ministry today in our society. The church may actually get smaller before it ever got bigger. Uh, if he were on the scene, if you, I, my experience has been this. You warn a divisive person once, that's probably the last time you'll ever see him again. You don't have to worry about warning them a second time. Uh, because really, they think you're the one warped. And they're ready to condemn you. There really is not nearly enough uh, confrontation and church discipline uh, in the church today. I may be like the Apostle Paul in, in the fact that he was accused of being bold when away. But when face to face... You know, not quite so bold. At least that was the accusation from the Corinthian church. Uh, maybe he really didn't like to confront people. I don't like to confront people. I have no problem proclaiming God's word, won't back down from God's word, but I really don't like confrontation. Uh, I think people that thrive on confrontation, there seem to be a lot of them out there, probably fall into the category of being warped and sinful uh, and self-condemned because it's certainly no fun uh, to rebuke anyone. The last few verses, as soon as I send Artemis and Tychicus to you, do your best to come to me at Nicopolis, because I've decided to winter there, and do everything you can to help Zenos the lawyer and Apollos on their way, and see that they have everything that they need. Our people must learn to devote themselves to doing what is good, in order that they may provide for daily necessities and not live unproductive lives. Everyone with me sends you greetings. Greet those who love us in the faith. In the faith, grace be with you all. Let's look at the final question. By what actions and by what abstinence should genuine faith in God express itself? And what is necessary on our part to ensure that this happens? Well, genuine faith is lived out by devoting ourselves to everything that's good, running away from everything that's evil, and avoid the drama. There's far too much drama in people's lives today. I hope you've enjoyed this study in the book of Titus. We'll see you the next time when we go to 2 Timothy and wrap up our first year and search the scriptures. God bless.